don't see any sign of it through my telescope. When is Bruce and everybody gonna get here? Well, Arnold, it's a long way from the airport. Yeah, the cab drivers in New York all drive like they took lessons from Evil Knievel. <laughs> Arnold, you're forgetting that the cabbies in New York take people from the airport to Manhattan by way of Cleveland. <laughs> hey, why don't I take a family picture of everybody? Okay. Oh, okay, that's a nice idea. All family right. portrait. Chins up, smile, and don't look right in the lens. All that's gonna be in the picture is your thumb. <laughs> Give me that camera and I'll show you how to take some good pictures. Listen, I saved all year to buy this camera, and you touch it, the only thing it's gonna develop is a lump on your head. <laughs> I'll get even. I'll put a pair of my shorts in your drawer so when you try to put them on, you'll strangle yourself. <laughs> okay, guys, cool it. Come on, let's get the picture taken now. Oh, uh, okay, now, smile. Okay, on three. One, two. <laughs> Arnold, you're gonna ruin the picture. No, I'm not. Yes, you are, you went like this. <laughs> no, he didn't, he went like this. <laughs> okay, let's try again. Okay, behave now, Arnold. Okay, everybody say cheese on three. One, two, three. Cheese. Mozzarella. <laughs> It takes a minute to develop, dear. Oh, you don't know how to take pictures. You're supposed to take them when nobody expects it, and you surprise them. Yeah, candid pictures, like in those gossip magazines. You know, those Italian photographers sure know how to surprise people. What do they call, Daddy? Oh, uh, I think the word is paparazzi. Then I guess the lady photographers are mamarazzi. <laughs> Came out perfect. Hey, you cut my head off. <laughs> my best part. Don't be upset, Arnold. One day you can take a picture of Willis and you can cut off his best part. You can't take a picture of Willis's best part. He's always sitting on it. <laughs> hey, look at him! Look at him! Oh, it's him! Oh, it's him! Oh, it's him! Just great. Mr. Drummond, I hope your company keeps having these broadcast conferences so we can keep getting these trips to New York. <laughs> I want to work on that. Boy, I love these freebies to the Big Apple. Yeah. yeah. You know, Dad traded in his and Morgan's first class tickets for four cheapies so we could come too? Cheapies? We had everything the first class passengers had, except we were strapped to the wing. <laughs> <laughs> Sit down, everybody. Oh, good. Now, listen, about where you're staying. Uh, hold it, Phil. Last time we had this big argument, and you insisted that we stay here, and you wined us and dined us, and you were the perfect host. This time, no arguments. I want the same deal. <laughs> you got it, Larry. Uh, thanks, pal, but actually, we have a couple of rooms at a charming little hotel with lots of little green things growing on the walls. Not plants, just little green things. <laughs> hey, Mr. Alder, couldn't Ruthie and Dan stay with me? Please, we have the room. Why not? And Morgan, since Mrs. Garrett's helping out at Kimberly School, why don't you stay in her room? Oh, that'd be great, thanks. You'll love Mrs. Garrett's room. She's got a picture of Rudolph Valentino that glows in the dark. <laughs> yeah, it'll be fun staying together. Okay, you twisted my wallet. Oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, listen, Phil, I've got something to talk to you about that's really important later. Sounds interesting, okay. And incidentally, Larry, we're bunking together in my room like we did before. Oh, this is terrific. Tomorrow night we'll have a big Thanksgiving dinner. Thanksgiving? But that was last week. Yeah, when daylight saving time ends, you're supposed to set your clocks back, not your calendars. <laughs> well, when we found out you were coming, we figured, why settle for one Thanksgiving? Now that you're all here, we can have a second one tomorrow. Oh. Right. Let's have two Thanksgivings and two Christmases, quickly followed by two birthday parties. <laughs>